Hi everyone. Okay, this is, I haven't uh, videoed for so long. I'm sorry about that. I've been super busy with my husband retiring and everything. So that's out of the way. Um, and of course now you have to get used to a new routine, which we're working on. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's quiet this morning. He's at the gym, so I thought that I would perhaps film a kind of a craft with me episode. I've had a lot of requests for that and you know um, I've got some software now that I can splice uh, episodes together and uh, also I'm working towards me um, and I downloaded some free software where you can flip it around. You can't do it in YouTube anymore. Somebody suggested I do that uh, so I went looking and apparently yep they just changed that so you can no longer flip your videos around. Uh, but I did find some free software, so I'll link the uh, site for you and if, if that's something you, you'd like to do. Anyway, uh, I'm just starting on my new book, which is the A Passion for Pink. And as you can see, I've already got the pages cut. Um, they are inked, and I'm using the uh, Tattered Rose uh, Distress Oxide. Um, really pretty, very, very soft though, so it doesn't really show all that much, but it takes out the white core, and I didn't want this one super grungy. There are tea stain papers in it, so that will add a little bit of vintage. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm cutting the corners, and as you can see, these are too big. Uh, so I thought I'd just, you know, start with one and show you what I've done so far. So this is the layout I've chosen. I generally do the same layout for both signatures. Uh, anybody who's worked on books knows that it it's a lot of work, a lot of time uh, spent making them. So I try and make it a little easier on myself by just basically doing the same layout. So I've got some uh, tracing paper that's been tea stained and then I've got some tea stained co um, printer paper. Every time I say copy, it sounds like coffee, so I try and say printer paper. <laughs> okay, and then, of course, the pages. I've added um, those jumbo index cards that I've tea stained. So they're going to be a base, and then I've cut up uh, into strips. Just This is the part of the kit, and yeah, I use them as the flaps, but this time I wanted... I don't know, I wanted something different than the last book, so I thought I would use the index cards. And then it just repeats itself pretty much. Um, I don't put uh, tracing paper in every spot. So there's two sheets uh, per signature, and then there's five sheets of the printer paper, and then two, two spots where I have the flaps, and then of course in the center I'll be putting the envelope. So I do a layout like this. Uh, just to sort of get the thickness of it. Now it looks pretty thin right now, but of course once I start adding stuff and you don't want your spine so thick that it's like this and then your book doesn't close properly. You can split things up into smaller signatures, uh, but if you really don't like sewing in the signatures, well then you've got, you know, five or six signatures you're sewing in to get a nice flat book. Um, so this is the way I do it. I, I generally do um, 10 pages, which includes the tea stain paper. So there are five of the pattern, five of the tea. Then the tracing paper, it's super thin, so I don't count those really. I may go back and add some more, but at this point, this is what I'm doing. So now what I want to do is start on my first, the first thing that comes, and that is this because it is... Um, too big. So I have one of these rulers. Uh, it's a Westcott ruler and there are two different edges, ripped edges. So I'll, I'll usually just kind of lay it on the center and I don't want it super ripped so I'm going to use this one and I don't want it going to the edge so what I'll do is line up the spine here on the left, on well, my left. Well, I guess it'll be your left soon too. <laughs> and then lay the ruler down so it's somewhat even. And then you just pull. 
and that's it. Then I'll do the same thing going this way, but in this case, uh, you know, I want it on both sides. So I'm going to just randomly take a little piece off of one side. And of course, it doesn't have to follow your ruler exactly because that's the whole point. You want it torn looking. Then I'm going to flip it. And I want it a little shorter than um, the page itself. So I'll just do that. And let's go about there. sure my page is right side up. I've got that. And then I'll put that back. Okay, that's good. So then we'll go to this one. Okay, set that aside. Pick the one page. I'm too high, that's my problem. Okay, and that there. So that ruler I purchased on Amazon, let's see if it has a name on that, tearing ruler is what it's called. So if you google tearing ruler, I'll just show that up high and then hopefully that'll, okay. Okay, then I put it back double check to make sure everything is right side up again because I tend to mess that up and I just did so there you go I will flip through this thing I don't even know like 50 times it seems um, checking and double checking now some people were asking me how I get my pages level and the answer to that is I don't <laughs> I like them like this, personally. I, yeah, so I rarely trim unless it's for some reason going too far off the edge of my cover. Uh, in that case, then yeah, I would trim. Um, now, I need to trim some of this off because those are not the right size. So, I'm going to just go ahead and measure this so yeah I've drawn a dot here this is usually you know how wide my pages are and uh, so I go ahead and do those now if, if you're wanting them even so this is how you do it you can start from the center or start from the front that's really up to you if you start from the center the first one I would measure the same width as the first page uh, because there's no bulk yet. So you just go ahead and trim that up. 
Now I have to trim it off too. I think I'm going to open this right up. I've got a lot of crap on my desk, so it might be a little bit hard to do. Okay. There we go. And then it is uh, eight and a quarter in length, my pages. So. Okay, so you'll see that it will barely be, well, it's not even past, you see. Now, depending on how many pages you have in between, um, that'll determine how much you want to trim off. So we'll put this one in there. Now, that's barely over, so I'd leave that, personally. Put my next things in there. Now that, I'm probably going to trim that to flip because that is going to be a little bit longer than I want just because I put a lot of stuff on my flips. So this one measures exactly the same as the others. Now you can go by uh, eighth of an inch or you can do quarter of an inch. It, it's really up to you. I started eighth of an inch um, but because this is my uh, flip, I, I want to do a quarter of an inch. So I'll just shave that much off that one. And as you can see, I don't need to do it for the index card because it is a lot narrower. Okay, now this one I will take off an eighth of an inch because, like I say, I like mine stacked. Uh, so I'm not going to take off a whole bunch because I don't care if it's not perfectly even. That's kind of the look I'm going for anyway. And then I won't trim this one. I rarely trim these unless they're really, really wide. But see, I like it like that. I like staggered paper. Oops, I forgot to shorten that one. Let's shorten that one. In a quarter. So if you mess up in any way on these ones, I mean it's no big deal. You can use them for something else. There's always a use for messed up pages. Okay, let's see if I've got that in the right order here. Patterned T. Here. And that goes in here, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to do the same for this one, same amount. Um, I believe I took that much off. And then eight and a quarter. Yeah, see some of the pages, I don't have much of a border, so I don't want to take it off. I, I just really like having full full sheets. And uh, the other way you can get around this, if your computer or your printer has the ability to print full pages, um, it makes a much bigger book, of course, but I've done that as well. But if it does and you like the smaller pages, just a little suggestion, when you're printing out, let me show you, when you're printing out your sheet, so I've already trimmed off my quarter inches, sometimes the back does not line up with the front uh, in, in the sense that you might trim off the top and then realize when you've trimmed the back, you flip it over and you realize, oh, there's still a white line on that side. So what I try and remember to do, I don't always do it, but print this one at my regular size and then the back I do full sheet. That way when you're trimming off your white borders on this side you never have to worry about leaving any white on that side. Just a little 
a little suggestion if your printer has that ability. Not all printers do. Now where you find mine, if you've got a Hewlett Packard printer, uh, when you go to your print menu and like when you say print and then it goes and says, you know, comes up with that list, on there it'll say um, your orientation, so either portrait or landscape, so whichever you choose. Uh, for my kits you need to choose landscape. Uh, if you go to scroll to the very bottom, sometimes it doesn't show. You have to scroll down a little bit and it'll say more options, I think. When you click on that, it will come up with a screen that will scroll as well across the top. So you scroll over and it'll say um, full page. And that's the one I choose. When you do that, it's going to uh, automatically, if you've got it set for photo, it's going to automatically go to a 4x6. Well, obviously you don't want that. So you want to change that to letter. And then change your orientation again to landscape. And then you can hit print. And that will give you a full page. Okay. Almost done here, I think. Uh, what did I do here? Yeah. That goes in here. Did I do the eight and a quarter? Oh. Mm, yes, I did. And then this one I could probably trim a little because it's not, you know, not too bad. So I think I will trim it just a, a wee bit. Not too much. But the closer you get to the center, the more you're going to have to trim off if you want them even. Now because I've done that, I need to re-ink that. And if I don't do it now, I will forget. So this is the Tattered Rose Distress Oxide. I had started out with the Distress the tattered rose and my ink just wasn't coming out. I haven't used it in a long time and I needed to re-ink. Well I don't have that re-inker. I went to my craft store and they didn't have any so I bought that one because I know I'll use it anyway so it's not a baby. Okay then we've got the flaps go in there And, oops, I wanted to trim that flap. And take that off. These ones I haven't inked at all yet, so I'm not going to do it now. Nope, I want that off a little more. My husband's just come home, so might get a wee bit noisy in here. Okay, eight and a quarter long. And this one, because it's right in the center, I am going to trim it to here. And that should be enough. And then the envelope goes inside that. in the center. So, put that out of the way. And you can see that um, if I've got any that stick up, I just rip them off. It's no biggie. Okay. So now you can see that the edge isn't, I mean it is uneven, but it's not super uneven and you don't see any of the tea-stain, just the pages. So that's the way I like it. Um, you can do your own thing now that you know how. Now at this point I decide do I want you know to do the corners and yes because this is a really really feminine book so I definitely want to do corners. So let's um, move my cart over and see which corner ones I want. Um, 
I really like that swirling lace one, which is this one, but I just used that in the last book. Not quite certain I want to do that again. So, let's see. I have that one, and I have that one, and I love this one. This one's pretty, bubbles. You can see that. And then I've got the shells. And thanks, honey. And then I've got this one. Just close the door for me. I really like this one too. So what I'm going to do is take a scrap and see. Do I want to do that? Not really. Oh, here. This is really ugly yellow. I will use this. This is the Martha Stewart. And you know what I don't like about her stuff is she doesn't put the name right on here. It is called Cherish because I did stick a, a thing on there. I don't know if you can even get Martha Stewart anymore, but this one is called Cherish. And that's what that corner looks like. Quite pretty. Um, it's very simple. Now, I really love this one. But I think it's too whimsical for this book. So I'm not going to use that one. The scallops is uh, really pretty. This one's called Scallop Petals. That one's really pretty. I do like that. Mm. But then, of course, I really do like this one. Well, let's do this one and see what that looks like. I'll just cut some of this off so I can do it again. And choosing corner punches is... Um, Sometimes it's difficult because you have to consider your medium and what you'll be punching. So if you're punching really thin stuff, because I can punch through that uh, tracing paper, but you need to uh, sandwich it between, uh, you know, something sturdier. Okay, so you see this would bend like crazy and then tear off. So that's no good. So I won't do that one. Of course, I want to show you this swirling lace. You've probably seen it a million times, but it's just so darn pretty. It is my favorite punch. And yeah, it's thin, but because it has a wider base, it's not as bad. I do still really like that one. And then I have one more, so I'm just going to trim this one off and punch that one out. Uh, this one, I have no idea what the name of this one is. But again, you see how real thin that is? So that's honestly no good. I have these because they're um, the punch around. So I have the straight ones that match up. You make some really pretty um, mats, photo mats and stuff using these because the whole thing's stuck down on your page anyway. Uh, so it doesn't matter about those. So I, I honestly think it's between this one and the swirling lace. I love the swirling lace. So I think I'm going with the swirling lace might use this one for other things in it, but for now, that's what I'm going to use. So let me just get these out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how I would punch um, tracing paper. I'm just going to grab some because this one I've torn so I'm not going to punch these ones out but I want to show you what I would do. Um, I just use a piece of scrap paper and uh, what is that there? Oh yeah, that one didn't work. So I would just put it 
you know, right in the corner. You have to make sure it's lined up or you're not going to get it punched properly. And then because your punch goes down, you want the hard surface up. So slide that in and then punch it. So then think how easy that was. And this is really thin paper. Okay, so that's just a little, a little tip for you if you didn't already know. And that's all I'm going to do today, guys. I've got 25 minutes on the camera already. Um, actually, you know, I think what I'll do is I'm going to pause it here and then I'm going to splice my videos together and see if it works. So if you're watching it, yay, it worked. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And we're going to go ahead and punch the corners here. And I'm going to start from the center. Now what I tend to do is punch them together so they're even. doing these because they're going to have things attached to them. And then the next one is this one. So don't forget to go back and um, ink those. Which is one of the reasons I go through my book like a hundred times to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. I think I get so excited about seeing the progress and I get ahead of myself and forget to do some things. Okay, so then that one goes on. And then this one. I love this page. Roses are so pretty on this one. Okay, so that goes in there. And that goes in there. And then I usually I go back and I just tear that off. hope everybody had a great summer. Mine was very eventful. Not really. <laughs> we had a really hot summer. Lots of forest fires and it was stifling in here for over a month, which is pretty long for us. We have nice summers, but not generally that, that hot for that long. Looking forward to fall. I love storms, so we're actually going to Vancouver Island in a week, and uh, we're gonna go to Tofino for the first time. Spend a day in Tofino, and it's really famous for its stormy beaches and its uh, what do they call it? Wild surfing. Um, something I would never in a million years do, but. It's going to be cool to be able to go and watch. I'm looking forward to that. It's the cool thing about both being retired. Yeah, you don't have to worry about when you come home. Now, normally I'd pause all this stuff, but 
somebody said to me, no, don't do that. We like watching everything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is, this is raw. <laughs> if I make a mistake, you're going to see it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tear this corners off because I know I'm going to anyway. And then the last one. Do I want to do that? Do I want to maybe leave that so that it looks more like a cover? No, nah, that looks funny. <laughs> okay. I could just corner around it though. That might look nice. Yeah. big wide one. Let's do that one. It's a punch my mother-in-law gave me. I'm not super loving it though. It gets stuff stuck in there and then you can't get the corner of your paper in properly. That looks nice. And then you turn the page and you've got... Yeah. Well, I've never done that before, so there you go. There's a first. Uh, so I'm going to do that on the other ones, but not in this video. Let's get rid of this garbage. And... I should ink it. really is a pretty pink. I know you can barely see it, but soft. Very soft. And as you can tell, I don't ink my uh, tea stained stuff. This, I might do some sprays on in this book though. Thinking I might. I'm not super picky about this kind of thing. I, likely most of this will be covered up anyway. So, not overly picky. Well, as you can tell, it's uh, the inking that I do in this. It, it really depends on um, the look you're going for. For me, uh, I'm not going with grungy. It's just too feminine, this kit. So I don't really want super grungy. Uh, this is probably the first time I've ever used um, color other than, you know, vintage photo or something like that. I wanted to give it a whirl, see how I liked it. And I do like it. It's different, you know. To appeal to different people's tastes, right? Anyway. So my process for assembling a book, I think I have a video on that, but um, you see how I did the layout? Well, before I even do any of this, I cut everything, ink everything, and get it all prepped. So I have all the ephemera for this kit already printed and cut and inked and assembled. Some of it you have to assemble. So I have all that done ahead of time. 
And that way, if I get an inspiration of a page layout, it's all there. Like for instance, this is already done. So if I'm going along and I think, okay, well that page definitely needs something, um, then I have it. So some of these printed pages are fairly plain, um, like that one. So if I want to keep, say, the border up here, you know, I might lay something on here, um, like this, actually. There you go. Yep. Now, when it comes to, you know, I've got this, but underneath, you see, I've got the swirling doohickey. So what I'll do is I will actually glue this down first, and then... I will wait for that to dry, go back and put my punch over, turn it upside down so that I can see what, you know, that it's lined up and then I'll repunch it. Uh, I don't I don't punch it and then line it up because I don't always have it right at the edge and then you you know, you're off center, you're off your punches don't line up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue this on because I actually quite like that. So I'm going to slide that out keeping everything in order, but I want to slide that out so that I don't um, glue up anything else. Yeah, I like that. Pretty. But I don't want to put it right to the edge. Okay, glue. And I've mentioned this before, but when you're gluing pockets, use glue. Don't use tape. And this is stuck. This glue has gotten super thick. It's hard to come out now. Wow, that's really thick. I'm having issues with my glue. Okay, do I have any other? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I've got a Tombow. It's brand new. I've never used this glue before. Uh, my mother-in-law got rid of all of her crafting stuff. And she said I could have first dibs. So, of course, I grabbed all the glues. <laughs> Give this a whirl. Do I have to do anything with it? No, I don't. Very liquidy. I know a lot of people like this glue a lot. I've read a lot of comments about it, so I'll give it a whirl. See what. I like it. Oh. Well, that's not good. See, that's the one thing I don't like about it right there, is that I can't have it standing up. Okay. I'm on camera, you guys. Sorry if I'm not. Alright. Now, put that back where it belongs. Make sure there's none on this side that's going to glue my pages together. And there is, so... It seems to dry pretty fast, though. I think. Okay. So there's a pocket on that page. I like that. That's pretty. Now I might go ahead and add... I've got all these journaling words. Mm, 
these ones are the small ones. Let's see, I've got big ones. So I also have these pretty flowers, but we don't want to add more flowers. That's too many flowers. Let's get rid of this scrap of paper, too. Um, where are the other ones? Here they are. Let's try that. I hate cutting straight lines. I swear I hate it. Uh, that doesn't really show up. So we'll revisit that later and see. Need something, but I don't know what yet. Okay, let's check out. See, now this is a really plain one. Let's see what else I've got here. Well, I've got one of these, which is pretty neat. And this is like a fold down. But what I have to do... So you cut this all out, and there are white lines to show you where to um, bend it. And I just, right in the crease, add a touch of glue. Thin line. Don't make it thick. And then fold that down. And just, I don't know how long this takes to actually glue, but... So then it creates a um, matchbook type closure. And so then I'm going to decide, do I want it up here? I also try not to go right to the edge because then when you've sewn things in and you're turning your pages, it gets, you know, it doesn't flatten. It's not nice. So I always keep it away from the edge. Um, let's do it right here, but I'm going to leave this open. So I'm just going to glue top and bottom. This will pull down like that, but it also has a side tuck. I get this out of the way. I don't know why that glue dried up. Time for new glue. Okay, now is this my first flips? Or my second one? Let's start with here. Okay, I have all kinds. Of, oh, I also have all these, so that'll go in one signature. That'll be in one signature. That'll be in one signature. And there'll be two of these per signature. So I've done those. And. I also have these little booklets, which I totally forgot to print on the inside, so I just ink them in pink. Okay, so all of these are going on regular pages, so let's start at the beginning. Well, let's start right here and do that. Now, when I'm gluing these, I glue this whole section if I don't, then things fall out. So I tried just the tip at one time, and yeah, that doesn't work. So I glue down quite a ways. Now 
Now you can go sideways, you can use it here if you want and go, you know, um, actually maybe that's, I'm going to do something different and do that instead of a belly band. Let's just go and make it a tuck. And I'm just going to go here with it. Let's slide it down a little. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, I'm probably going to do some trim, but maybe not on that. It's pretty busy. Okay, so then I have... Where did I put that pocket? Which page is that? Okay, so it's the front. So the other pocket I want in the back. And I think I'm going to add this belly band back here too. Mm That's pretty. Yep, let's do that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to keep you on camera, but I'm not looking, so <laughs> I hope this is all going to be good. I work very close to myself, generally. Oh, that really sticks fast. Guess you better get it right the first time. Now I know I've got blue bears. This side's dry, so I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to close my glue up now. So, turn that over, and then gently squeeze so that you can see it. You see what I mean? And then pinch it. It should be pretty much lined up. So there you go. And then ink it right away or I forget. You get a little white showing, just take your ink and roll it around in there and it'll cover up the white. That other one's not dry yet, so I don't want to squeeze that one. Okay. 
Okay. Now I have one more pocket that needs to go in here somewhere. Where is that the other one? Oh dear, I can't remember. Let's see if I'm going to over here. Yeah, one more. One more pocket. Oh, that's really pretty, isn't it? Yeah, not there. Looks nice there. Uh, let's... Well, that's nice too. I think I like that. Yep. These actually make quite a wide pocket, so that's why I'm doing this, which I learned my lesson from the last book I made, with the same kind of pockets. These ones I'm going to line up to the left. I believe that is all. Okay, I lost my place where that went. Darn. Ah, went in here. Yes, it did. Okay. This is extra. I only have one of these printed. I think I'll put it in the other signature and use one of these instead. All right. The other thing I try to avoid is um, putting too much on the front of your signature so I try and do a couple things here then flip it over and work backwards that way and that way you've got things on both sides and you're not front heavy if that makes sense sense to you guys. Okay, then we're going to start on this, but um, I think I'm done for today. <laughs> I need a break. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope this. I hope you enjoyed this kind of thing. Let me know if you do, or if you found it boring. Um, yeah, I can change things up. My next video, though, I will be showing my uh, completed travel journal from Hawaii. So, we'll talk soon. Bye!